for Mirage? Well, they're um, it's ba bad. They're they're very bad. And how bad are they? Well, here's the thing. Technically, because uh, Guerra played a single game for them, he is uh, well, he's at the bottom. He's the lowest rated player in the entire league. Second lowest player in, play, rated player in the league, Nick's Third worst rated player in the league, Melted. Sixth worst rated player in the league, Kento. So how bad are things from Mirage? Ah, they're not great. They're not, they're not doing very well. And we're saying all this to set expectations because should Mirage prevail today, it would be quite the comeback. In fact, it might be one of the biggest upsets that we'd see. Even though SSG are not the most formidable team right now, as you can see at the top, they are one and two. And they're in eighth place. They're not that much farther ahead from the winless Mirage team. The bright spots for Mirage is they will be the story. I assume for most of this match. Yes. Benji Mula. Benji, who I believe it was either Twitter.com or Reddit.com, the great people of those websites, said that Benji was on Fraud Watch for all I've of Stage this. 1. They said that he is a la fraud, just as we said that about Canadian. But Benji's actually been having a pretty good stage. How good is a pretty good stage? Well, by Mirage standards, 26 and 25, with a 1.07 rating. Not that much worse than him. I mean, not great, but on a support role, Marm is second on the team with a .9 rating, 16 kills, 22 deaths. But Marm also has some clutch stats and has been playing the objective. And she real realistically, she should not be the second best player rating-wise yes. on the team. With her role, she should probably be fourth on the team, maybe fifth. The fact that she's second is not great. And the two players that have not had the most success, Kento, who made his uh, NAL debut, and Melted, even though Melted did have to take a game off and have Garrett play, so that obviously does kind of fudge the numbers a little bit. A little bit. I mean, it's not like SSG are that much better, though. I mean, yeah. right above Kento, Bosco and Fultz. Yeah, SSG, so, they definitely haven't had the gr best stage so far. They had a really good win over DZ on this map, and they probably could have won that Beast Coast game yesterday if Sweater is even having a little bit more off a day than he was. So while the R1-2, they are just a couple places ahead of Mirage, it is a much different story here. Also, you saw the ban phase, ban phase play out. We saw Mirage take out the castle, but what's still on the board? The Azami. And so SSG, who love extending into CCTV, like most teams on border do, will have plenty of Kiba barriers to place in those windows and place on the desk to have deployable shields and de facto castle barricades as well. So while that ban might take out some utility SSG loves, leaving that Azami on the board basically gives them a ready-made replacement. Right you are, Carter. Excellent point. I thought so. No, I... You were, you were correct. I know, I, I thought so. Anyway. Let's execute right now. Coming over towards the uh, office side of things. Skies is positioned over there. Oh, the shotgun oh. in hand. Nade goes down. That might have Skies' name on it, but it misses the new leader of Mirage, none other than Nyx himself, going up against his cousin in Hot and Cold. We call this, and I say this time and time again, a family affair. Skies burns one smoke canister towards the doorway, and Alex at the window inside of this alcove in office. Mirage are really struggling to deal with this. They have drones available, and they could push it. There are the smokes. There go the nades. Sky's a beautiful shot on Nyx. That's the very first kill, repositioning the smoke. Doing some favors for Skies, in fact, as now he's going to get jumped on, but he looks the wrong way, and he is a bit of a missed opportunity. He gets taken down. Marm is the one credited with the kill. Rampy fires back. There's still another obstacle for Mirage inside of Fountain. Can they tackle it? Will they be flummoxed by the play of old Rampy? They just might be. I mean, they've walked into the entirety of SSG setup already, so it might take a little bit more than just a 50-50 gunfight to deal away with Rampy in this spot. They do have Benji watching metal, though, so I do like the uh, precautions taken by Mirage to make sure a lot of these rotates are covered. They're even moving forward into archives right down. Marmalade with that diffuser is going for the plant, despite Rampy still in fountain. And he drops right down, eliminates Melted. Where will the coverage come from? It's by the opening, but down goes Marm, hot and cold, and Fultz the final two kills. SSG start things off with a banger of a round, and that's the confidence they like to see. Well done by them. As we talked about, Bosco and Fultz are the two statistical worst players for SSG, and for Bosco on his role, that isn't much of a surprise. For Fultz, though, it is a little bit of a surprise, especially yeah. when that team, if Hot and Cold is an off day, lives and dies off of Rampy and Fultz showing up huge. So an early kill from Fultz will be confidence inspiring for fans of Space Station. That's an armory defense, very firmly in the category and in the column of SSG, and then they move downstairs 
to the bathroom bomb site. They moved to the bathroom bomb site, and this has definitely been the most difficult site for the defenders, at least back in stage one. But still, it is one where you have to cover a lot in order to make this work. You got to, ex of course, extend up into office, as you would expect, defend the top floor directly above the site. The also. You might want to focus a little bit in CCTV, but then also focus a little bit more on customs and passport. You really need to cover a lot of different angles to make this site work because there are just not a lot of good places to sit. And again, because that Azami is on the board, you can use a lot of the Kiba barriers to, well, make any of those spots a lot better. Pre-place a couple in the prep phase for CCTV, like we're seeing Rampy do right now, or place some in any number of locations to make those spots a little bit more palatable. For Mirage, they have a lot of places to clear, and what we saw in Armory Parker, they just sort of pushed into skies and, well, they lost the initial fight and then it just kept trading in the favor of Space Station. They can't really do that on Tellers. They have to deal with at least one segment of these angles that are being covered. Very correct. A lot Again, of I thought so. It, you know what? I'm, I'm two for zero right now. Did you see that the good people of Reddit were praising your abilities earlier today? Did you see that? I, I Reddit is the single most important bit of feedback that we can receive as casters. I don't know if you know this or not. That's what I thought. No, don't think that. But I did want to say, as we were in the middle of this match, and before we log off, that I appreciate you filling in for Nick this week, and it's been a pleasure to sit beside you, even if you do look and sound like Venture Girl. Man, can't even escape it. Can't even escape it here. Neither can on gold. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're struggling to segue away from that one, aren't you? <laughs> I was freaking up two big kills. The look on your face was fantastic, by the way. Mirage, uh, a relatively painless entry. I mean, not for Melted and Kento, but... They trade a good deal of their life for two opening picks. Space Station's defense crumbles just a little bit. They find a Mirage now in a 5v3 with half the round to go. So hypothetically speaking, let's say that Rampy and Hot and Cold were the first two people off the board for SSG. Right now, Mirage have... <laughs> Mirage have now, it. let's say, hypothetically. <laughs> let's say, hypothetically, your Azami was off the board very early on, and you lost Hot and Cold as well. Well, I, oh! okay, well, all the... Nice shot by Benji on to Foltz as now we segue into the action. This round for Space Station has Bosco and Skies in a 2v5. Now, I know that on paper that doesn't seem all well, that confidence-inspiring. A 2v5, Parker, well, that's not very good. But if you were to take two players on this team who have clutched more rounds than I would argue the entirety of Mirage has actually played... I it would be Bosco and Skies. You'd Skies. probably actually be correct on yes. that one. <laughs> I think that Bosco correct. and Skies have clutched more rounds than the entire roster of Mirage has actually played because they've been around for so long and both of these players have been so good. Bosco and Skies, really good, but uh, Clutch is going to get a little what bit harder. Down goes Bosco and a flawless round for Mirage is on the board. Mirage looking mighty good and there it is indeed, flawlessly done. They sweep through a couple opening picks, SSG. Do not recover in the mid-round, and Mirage continue with the ice in their veins. Surgical precision, and I will say, I like how quickly Mirage was able to pivot to the bomb site after realizing that they had such a big advantage, and the two players from SSG were well off site. Go to the bathroom, try to get the diffuser down. Well done. Yeah, and they didn't try to make the same mistake as they did on Armory. They said, okay, we should actually put some pressure on these players off site. And though we missed some of them, it clearly worked out very well, both Hot and Cold and Rampy falling very quickly and almost at the exact same time. And then Benji just takes up the exact same spot he watched in round number one, sitting outside on that CCTV doorway, keeping watch of top metal, which is pretty much just cutting the entirety of the map in two. If you want to cross that second floor, assuming you're not already up there, you're going to have to cross Benji's crosshairs. And well, that's exactly what happened with Fultz, and he got caught sprinting by Benji Mula, and that's pretty just unfortunate at that point. So Mirage, they decided to clear the roam. It went extremely well, took out some very good players and utility early on, and were able to capitalize effectively after that. So we had a pretty poor first round from Mirage, have a very good second round from Mirage, Hopefully this one, maybe it'll be a little bit more neutral, a little bit of an even contest. I mean, the only way that Mirage could have done better in that second round was getting the diffuser down, but they bailed off the diffuser in order to get the final kill inside a bathroom. So well played by them. Mirage though, really good stuff, honestly. And I mean, I know that it's easy to fixate on the bad with Mirage because so far through these three rounds, they're really, or through these three games, there really haven't been a lot of good moments for nope. Mirage. But this is a team that was dealing with some COVID-related issues. They had a coach stand in, and a coach who's not even really a player. It's not like you have somebody like Lycan or Mint who's played in pro play before as your coach. You're getting somebody who's there for their analytical mind, not for their actual gameplay ability. So it's been a tough spot. And I mean, Mirage, honestly, they talked about it before the very first stage, that when this roster was assembled, oh. and there's another opening pick, Kento being picked up, 
was a big part of what Mirage was hoping for in this stage to see that prowess. And right now sitting at four and one is a pretty fine number to be at, frankly. But Mirage still maybe just have not found their footing. Stage one, they came together. They didn't have a ton of time for practice and they're still suffering through those effects, especially with this roster change. When you essentially blow up the way that UIGL bring in Nyx and bring in Kento, that's some pretty big changes to the fundamentals of the team. And the killing for them will continue. Another from Kento engaging with the Malusi can't do it. Fultz picks up two inside of Armory. He's got Rampy by his side. Suddenly a 3v3, half the round to go. And again, bringing up how Mirage are either clearing or not clearing these players on the roam. Before you just had Kento sort of going in through Armory and solo clearing, you have now Nyx doing something similar and he's not finding much success. Marmalade just face checking metal, dies to skies, crouch walking up that very spot. Now Diffuser dropped inside of 90. Mirage also now in a man disadvantage. But again, going back to that roam clear, it worked for a little bit. Kento gets two kills, but it, I'm not sure if he was operating off of not a lot of intel, but he really was not operating off of a lot of teamwork. He just goes in through the doorway, and Fultz is able to pick up not just one, but two. So maybe Melta joins him, but definitely caught off guard by the presence of that maestro. And even though they are at a disadvantage, Mirage have that vertical, which can always be very powerful. If you want to send Benji in for a plant later, maybe hop in through that ventilation window. Nyx can cover from above and make sure that nobody goes through the rotate or goes through a doorway. But if SSG just get even one more kill, it's probably the round. I think you're probably correct on that one with 40 seconds to go. There's the drop to be found. Rambi flashed out. Could they capitalize off of this? No. Even blind, he still knows how to navigate his way out of the bathroom. He can play a little bit farther back. It's not the bomb site anymore. Despite the fact that SSG lost it, they've decided to go over towards Benson Workshop. So Rampy will retake from above after surviving any type of peril. He spots both of the players, but only goes for a single kill. He knows the other one's down there too, and it's skies to get kill number two for him on the round. Space Station making that finish look relatively clinical so well. You had Kento opening things up. That's all she wrote for Mirage in that one. All that was really there for Mirage in that roam clear was Kento and I believe Melted as well. I think he might have joined very late. They both push in through the exact same angle, unfortunately. There was nobody on maybe Archive's balcony to watch and see if Foltz is playing in there. Nobody pushing from office or the doorway or metal. You had Nyx go that way later on, but the damage had already been done. <laughs> so they were merely going to be compensating or trying to mitigate the earlier losses. I, so it was a little bit one dimensional for Mirage overall. And the individual skill of Kento, not only has been pretty good in this game so far, but was very good on that roam clear, but for Mirage, it was just too little or too much, I suppose, allocated to one side and not a lot of diversification. So SSG, so far in the first three rounds, coming away with the majority of the defenses, albeit by just one, and they get to go back to Armory, where was probably the worst early round we've seen from Mirage so far, but it seems like they've learned from the mistakes that they made since then. Yeah, it sure seems like that. And I mean, Afinka getting a couple entry kills is obviously good. Yes. Kento sitting on five, the rest of his team combining for four. But I mean, I don't want to say they're impactless because I think getting the very first kill for your team and then following it up, setting your team up well is not without its impact. You know, it's, it's totally different than Kento being in a 3v5, picking yes. up four kills and then ultimately losing. Like, of course, those are impactful kills, but nowhere near as impactful as starting things off well for your team. Unassisted putting pressure onto that armory upstairs, dislodging the defenders from their spots, and then being able to clear some utility and waste time allows the four other players of Mirage to accomplish their tasks. And if they're not droning them in, which it didn't seem like they were doing, at least from the short snippet that we had on our screen, they should be able to capitalize off the fact that a third player from Space Station is focused on that part of the map. That leaves a 4v2 elsewhere. Drawn out those players, if they're site players, how can you take a map control quickly? How can you get in to plant the diffuser faster? Mirage are starting on the same side that they did on Armory last time, focusing on the eastern part of the map, using some of this hard breaching to open up a wall on top east and get themselves a little bit of an entry point into office as a whole. Skies is also holding the same position where he opened things up with the first kill with that shotgun last time. And not a lot of focus from Mirage in the other parts of the map. They still just have Benji Mula, I believe, sitting outside that CCTV door. But I think there might actually be a couple people over there, one on the drone as well. But Benji on that Osa, a lot of the times we see the Osa used on Armory, specifically for flank watch on that East Stairs. But he at least will hold that same position and Mirage will certainly try things a second time. It's another Kiba thrown out from hot and cold. He's got one in his back pocket. All of them 
here. There will be no more than that. Using his gun to work, down goes Kento. The top fragger for Mirage is no more, and that's the second opening duel for Space Station so far through these four rounds. A very similar defensive setup from Space Station to meet that entry from Mirage, as you talked about. Skies was a very important part of this defense in the very first round. He's no longer. Nyx picks up kill number one on this map, and it leaves more in the favor of Rampy. Now Bosco under pressure as he is the cross from Rampy. Benji takes down Hot and Cold. Suddenly Mirage has the lead. And look at that. Oh my goodness. Benji walks in and he picks up a whole bunch as Nyx gets three. And this is personal between him and Space Station. Mirage battles back and any potential dominant start by Space Station is not there as this has been a seesaw of a match. Neither team winning more than one round in a row. Indeed, very even so far. And with Mirage, we saw them only pushing one spot, only pushing a couple holes in the wall, and it was a little worrying. They might make the same mistake as they did before, but instead of playing passively, Benji Mula, he gets into the fray. He pushes into CCTV, and it might have been a little bit more closer to a 50-50 gunfight than, you know, maybe 90-10 going his way. But the important part is that he wins it, and that's what Mirage needed. Just a little bit more comfort, but specifically for, play for SSG, a lot more discomfort because now you can rotate through 90 successfully. You don't have that angle that Hot and Cold got the kill onto Kento with to start things out. Mirage now have many facets to their execute and a lot more control, whereas SSG, now all they have to do is start swinging within the site. And that was the improvement we needed to see from Armory. And I have to say, Parker, I have to say, with that Teller's attack being a flawless and that Armory round as well, they haven't looked like, you know, showstoppers, number one NAL team. But Mirage ain't looking too bad. They are not looking too bad so far. No, Border obviously being a very favorable map. You said that they beat Beast Coast when they had Guerra on that. I remember Blitz was it a couple of those rounds, <laughs> if I recall correctly. Why not? I mean, put him on the shield operator. Enable the rest of the team. We haven't seen a shield trotted out from Mirage just yet. There's still one more round Plenty for that time. opportunity. But in the meantime, oh no. Oh, Hotton, no Hotton, no Hotton, no Hotton. Just get the kill, just get the kill. Please, somebody, somebody, anybody, there we go. literally okay. anybody. And you know why he did that? Because the super charm. <laughs> That's, that is exactly why, just in case you're curious. Why did he miss all those shots? Well, there's your answer. <sighs> so, hmm, hmm. Oh, okay, so obviously Mirage, they want to start pressure in Armory, but, okay, that's a good kill from Nyx, but they want to start pressuring Armory and- Oh, never mind, that's I'm an even done. better one I'm from I'm just Nyx. done. So, they, there was, they just kind You're of- saying? They kind of fumbled the clear over on CCTV because they just like ran in front of Foltz and didn't really drone out Hot and Cold or Foltz for that matter. But then Nyx just walks in and kills two people. So it's like the early round didn't even happen. Patience from Mirage. About the halfway point of round number five, it's another bathroom defense. SSG as a team, even if they win or lose, they still like to go through their cycle. They don't like playing back to back. And it's an observation that I've made with SSG before on these broadcasts. Oh. And Hot and Cold's been downed, by the way. Is there a secure that can be had from Skies? Will he cross through harm's way? Does he fear? for his teammate's safety. They'll drop instead and link up. Marm is planting the diffuser. Bosco does not seem to know this, not too far away, but there's a nitro cell to go and it downs Marm. Now with the SMG 11 in hand, cannot do enough damage to Benji. Marm will need to be retrieved. Nyx waiting for the drop, but the drop has already happened. Now it's Benji at the bottom of the stairs to do battle with Marm who's still down and hot and cold is about to bleed out. So it doesn't look like he'll be retrievable. Nyx oh. in, all of a sudden Nyx is just on an absolute heater. I knew it. You were gonna say. I knew it. I saw Hot and Cold go down. I was like, did he just get C4 by his own teammate? I, but I wasn't sure. I knew Skies did it. I, I heard the explosion, and there are different sounds that you can pick up on. I know that for some of you, it might not be the most discernible, but if you cast this game long enough, the sound of a nitro cell is wildly different from the sound of an impact or, or a grenade. frag grenade. Exactly. So if you hear that sound, you think, okay, well, it was a nitro cell. Well, why is Hot and down? Well, how confusing is that? Either way, Mirage of the lead, and not that there's been sloppiness on SSG because there's a great, there's a great talk that happened on Twitter today. They've been trying to detox from social media, but I did see it, it did come across my feed. Rams basically said that when we beat Space Station, the focus was on how much Space Station sucked versus how well we did. Mm -hmm. I think there's something to be said there. And I think it really depends on the matchup. If you've got a team that are, you know, indomitable, and they make a number of errors, 
then we call it out. Astralis versus TSM really comes to mind. Astralis's errors were so easily visible that it's it's low hanging fruit for us to talk about it. TSM obviously committed errors too. Yes. You just don't see them as much, and a lot of them might be not fundamentals that are the problem. Here, I mean, there's been mistakes made up on both sides, but Mirage are certainly playing with much more confidence, and I really 100%. wish we could look at what Nyx is doing because he's finding all of these, and I don't want to call it garbage kills, but he's finding all of these mid-round sweep-up kills, and I mean, they're hugely important for his team. They are, not only are they important, but it, it also stems from something I think maybe he was lacking. I know there was a CGG article that talked about he had a .02 rating on attack in the first three play days. And right here... That's dreadful, by the yeah, way. Yeah, that is awful. That is, like, terrible. But he's not playing like he had that rating. When he got those three, when those two kills specifically to bring that back, he was just walking in and face checking and swinging people. That's not somebody who's playing like they're thinking about that rating they've achieved previously. He gets a third kill later as well. Mirage are playing like, not only is Nyx playing like that rating didn't happen, Mirage are playing like the first three play days haven't even happened. They have some of their fundamentals on lock, obviously making some mistakes, as you said, but they're still able to win these rounds, not just by dumb luck, but they are genuinely making a lot of these good plays. And well, right there, Nyx faces a little bit of a hectic early round. Unfortunately there, not Mirage good. came so close to greatness. Not good. I not mean, they, great. They tried to go for the pinch, but they were not expecting the play from inside of office, inside of archives, and that ultimately is what undoes them. The very first kill, or undoes them. The very first kill comes from Space Station onto Melted. Melted in the basement on this team stats wise in terms of kills and it's not going to get all that much better Obviously Mirage had a rough three-day stretch. They're on land now This is a different team and I'm happy to give them a fair shake now that they're on land Me too and can play up to their level <laughs> This, this match, by the way, for Space Station is hugely important. As we talked about in the Astralis matchup, if Space Station lose here, it is hard to imagine a path where SSG can then make it to the Major. And yeah, there will still be five more matches for them to play, but making up that ground will be extremely tricky with the strength of schedule that they have coming up and how competitive North America has become. And just small little mistakes have really been the story for Space Station. Look at that Nitro Cell, a botched Nitro Cell from Skies. Something like that can completely turn an entire round around. A bomb has been well, that located. sounds funny to say if you don't make a small little error. And not just a botched Nitro Cell, Marmalade was on the would have been on the receiving end of that and was on drones. That could have been an easy 5v3 right there, but that small mistake, like you said, goes their way. Stupid right. little mistakes, man. Stupid little mistakes. They get you in the end. They do. The little things. Sky still posted up right now. That's a beautiful oh. shot. He redeems himself with a kill on Marm. It took a little bit longer for her death to come, but it's still at the hands of the same man on Space Station. Skies can continue to move down below, and the killing will come out from both teams, but it's Space Station coming out ahead in the blows. Kento's been good at the start, but he's cooled off quite a lot. And Space Station, preserve any potential issues and keep the momentum somewhat on their side. They keep it close, first half, three to three, which honestly, Border has been surprisingly defended in North you America. You said you wouldn't make a joke Look, about it. You are gonna make you're gonna make supplementary content, especially a video about how North America really likes to defend Border and it is an abnormality that in North America, it is a, it is a defender-sided map versus everywhere else in the world. And of course I'm gonna now reference it. To locate and defuse bombs. Talk about it. All right, fine. So, if he wants me to talk about it, part of the reason I said that Border was defender-sided in NA was partially because of how the map is constructed. You can't anchor on a lot of the sites, so that means the defense is going to spill off and hold site, s spots off the site, such as CCTV or Office. And what this does is, it forces the attack to clear those positions because you can't really just leave these spots unchecked. You can't just hop into the site, say, on tellers because there could be people playing passport and people from above. So the attack has to clear it, and for a lot of these engagements, take CCTV, for example, if you try to enter through, say, the doorway over by break room, there are so many angles you have to check, one from 90, one to the right of you, and the CCTV table to the left of you. You try to enter from East Stairs, similar story. Try to enter from Armory, similar story. So if Mirage go to this defense, using that Azami to cut off lines of sight that they might have to worry about, or at the same time, just forcing SSG to peek them, maybe with a little bit less intel, they tend to favor the defense just because of how this site, this map is constructed. In SSG, they have to clear these roams. And if Kento or Benji or anybody on these roams is getting a good early round, even if it's just one kill, it's important to note for the trend going forward. 
Jail opened up, as that is where SSG wants at least some of its positioning to go through. They're spotting all the Kiba barriers that Melted have, has thrown out. Now, Melted might only be one and four on that Azami, but he will be integral in terms of utility play. And you can see that small little angle now being watched by Kento as in one of those Kiba barriers from the Azami goes up in front of him. First half in the books in terms of opening kills, Space Station four first bloods to Mirage's two. Mirage took three of the rounds, one of which was flawless. Space Station took three of their own. There you go. Three bomb sites were played. Ventilation workshop, bathroom tellers, armory archives above. So good variance, but not all four bomb sites being shown. Nope, not all four just yet. We also have a kill starting out for Mirage. Nick's able to see four skies, the buck player. You would hope to rely on that vert. And remember how I talked about earlier how sometimes taking gunfights on border can be difficult? I One remember. way teams will bypass that mm -hmm. is by using these frag grenades either from below or just to try to not even have to take the gunfight anyway. Ooh. SSG failed that, but Rampy recovers by finding Benji down below, who is more than willing to take that engagement. Combine that with Melted already being on low HP and not exactly having a key barrier in hand if he dies fairly soon after. SSG not only will have the advantage, but will probably be able to start pushing in based on the control they could probably leverage as a result. A great possibility. Well, they need to get that kill, though. They absolutely do melt it on such low HP. They're going to search for that one. Hot and Cold making an awful racket down below. Struggling right now with that armory wall. Bandit coming out, and this is... Uh, Mirage seemed to quite like this operator, and why not? For good reason. Kaid is unbanned, by the way, so could have been played. Maybe Nyx knows something that we don't, by the way, in terms of these operators being brought. Maybe he just likes the MP7. Who exactly knows? Look how close he is to this window He's right so now. close. He is so close. Can he, can he taste it? Bosco getting the fuse down, by the way. The smokes, though, actually ah, subduing him. And there's Nyx to run out. Goodness gracious. All of a sudden, Mirage dominate the kill feed, and it's melted to seal the deal. Some confidence building for the Great White Northern team. And just like that, they gain the lead again. Now I'm, now I'm really just going to start hammering home on that border defender side, I think. Because, Parker, this mm -hmm. is the last time we'll talk about it. Promise? I, I do promise. Obviously, we had the first pick Look by... My word. <laughs> <laughs> we had the first pick by Nyx on Disguise and melted on low HP as well. But aside from SSG entering into customs, they really didn't have that much control. Even on 1 HP, melted still controlled CCTV. Even... With only, I believe, one player sitting there, SSG or Mirage still had control of office. SSG, when they moved in for the plant, all they did was they got on the ventilation balcony and then moved in through that archives doorway. But Mirage still had control of all of these positions, and Bosco already on low HP. He gets down because of the smoke, and all of those angles that SSG never cleared come alive, and that is the problem with border sometimes. If you don't clear those positions, once you go in for the site, you're basically in a map-wide crossfire if they've set it up a certain way. Would you say that's part of why it's so defender-sided in North America? Would you... See, the whole reason I that? said that was to put the bit to rest, and now you keep bringing it back. No, but you see, as, as we are both very big fans of Tim and Eric... You've made me a big fan of Tim and Eric. That's what we are teaching you. We are teaching you the ways. It's been a month-long cram I, session. And I will tell you this. The beauty of Tim and Eric is that they continue to go until things go through a cycle where it's funny and outrageous, and then it becomes very unfunny because they keep going, and then you keep going even farther until it becomes funny again. Eric Andre is, I think, in a similar boat with some of his bits, but... You know, I um, wish I was LeVar Burton. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> anyway, Nick's on nine kills right now, 30 seconds into this round. Mirage's best result through these three matches that they've played was a loss to TSM, but they lost... 4-7. So they've already matched their total. That means that it seems very likely that even if Mirage ends up losing here, they're going to put in their best performance against a team for Space Station. That's terrible timing because, again, Space Station is also in the basement of North America. In fact, they're actually in ninth place right now based on the tiebreaker criteria as it was Beast Coast who vaulted above them. Space Station's results were a loss to Exet, a victory over DZ, which did seem like a bit of a surprise at the time, and then a loss to Beast Coast. And a loss to Mirage here would essentially be the nail in the coffin of Space Station's hopes of going to the Major, which would be obviously a very disappointing result for the former world champions. Look at that, All Nyx right. just feasting upon Skies, but he gets pushed into the cabinet by Rampy, who now has very firm control of security and can still hold that position with the Kiba barriers there to assist him. It's halfway point in the round, a bit slow of a starter, but Mirage did start it off before it was equalized by Space Station. And trading out a Thorn for the Sledge when the Sledge is basically the only player on SSG who, well, uh, 
outside of maybe the Jackal secondary shotgun could accomplish vertical or creating vertical holes to look down in a ventilation and workshop. That is a trade that I would make 100% of the time for Mirage. And this, look at the time as well. Only a minute left. And there is still a player holding on to Armory inside a sandwich right now. These Razor Blooms keep going off, keep giving Marmalade intel as to when these players might push in. Once the drone comes through, she's got to start fighting. She still has control and can still waste time. Rambi in a terrible spot right now, but he gets finished off by Marm. Folds to the rescue. Marm, as well, ended because of this. This team's just trading. Space Station are keeping it close. Oh, Benji gets absolutely rocked by Fultz. And that has got to hurt. Kento and Melted now with 30 seconds remaining. Space Station have the advantage. The upper hand in terms of numbers, and Melted doesn't know that he's getting shot from behind. He's a sitting duck, a pylon, an NPC in that round. Kento was the flashy pickup for Kento Mirage, time. and he gets one on the Fultz. A second drop could come in. There's a flash, but <sighs> hot and cold from above. The gridlock. We didn't see a lot from the track stingers, but that F90 in hand is a pretty potent gun, and I'm actually surprised we don't see more of it, if not for the fact that it's attached to gridlock. <laughs> Either way, again, we talked about going back and forth. Mirage won two in a row. That's the only time that's happened, because again, Space Station on four, Mirage on four. And I have to say, a good portion of how that round was trending came down to Fultz flicking onto Benji Mula inside oh, of office. That that kill completely changes the round if it yes. goes the other way. Because well, let's say not let's say Benji doesn't even get that kill. Let's just say he is a thought that SSG have to wonder about. As they go in there execute, okay, we know there's another upstairs. Fultz literally just saw him. What's he gonna do? Where is he right now? Do we have somebody on the drone? Is he gonna be able to get a flank? Do we have to worry about him retaking vertical control as we go in for the execute? So even if Benji doesn't get the kill, and let's say he gets away or rotates out or just sits in a corner and waits, SSG have to consider it. If he gets that kill there, as you said, that's man advantage. He definitely has vertical control, can continue, continue contesting. But Fultz shutting that down, all you have are the players down below, and they can start making that drop, can use those vertical holes, but if Benji remains alive, that is either undecided or something that SSG don't have an option to do. So even though they lost it, that was still overall a really solid round for Mirage and a very slow clear by SSG. He's feeling one. He didn't really have the best results against Fultz onto that flick, but either way, he's lined up for a potential other. Nobody from Space Station takes the bait. Again! I mean, we can talk about this ad nauseum. We can talk about it till we're blue in the face or whatever color we want to be. Mirage have put in their best performance so far, win or lose. Undeniably. Undeniably so. Nyx in particular has been leading the way on this team with a lot of those garbage kills, a lot of those sweep up kills through the mid round. People might wonder, oh, well, what is a garbage kill? Garbage kills is just like where you just, you take out the trash. Yeah. You just take out the trash. And midway through the round, when somebody's not looking in your direction, you can just walk in and get two freebies. Those are garbage kills. It's not meant as a bad thing in case people get really upset. It doesn't mean that he's garbage or the people are garbage. It's just about the state of the kill. If you walk in and you kill somebody from behind, it's a bit of a garbage kill. Well, he's certainly not having a garbage match so far. And after all, he nope. picked up a lot of the kills he got so far in the match on that attacking side where he has struggled on this Mirage roster so far. So definitely putting in some good work. On the defense, though, he's doing fine. But he's already rotated back. He's given up that armory control. That's an important piece that wow. Mirage have. But wow, Kento just catches hot and cold lacking on top of that hatch. Parker, hot and cold, sticks his back out to Kento. And he's like, that's mine. That's that's free. That's an important kill. But by the way, that's a garbage kill. That's a garbage kill. It backs up. You get a freebie. We call them freebies. You call them garbage kills, whatever you want to call them. That's what we're referring to. Okay. Fultz was spotted out. This was good patience from Mirage. They knew he was there for quite a while. Benji can capitalize off of it. And SSG have failed on their entry, losing two players, including your Twitch and your Lion. Next up, as Rampy walks into Fountain, they're going to need to figure out what Melted is doing and narrowly missing out on him. Rampy on the hunt, but Melted cannot be cannot be found. Benji's up there too, and they might not know this. The hatch is open. They could think that it's been a disappearing act, but just like that, Benji gives his position away. He knows that there's in there at least one player from Space Station in that position. He's biding his time, but look at this. He's killed 30 seconds off of the clock. Bosco should have no problem being able to capitalize off this and does so as Marm now repositions. The advantage that Mirage had, they cannot let up, and it's smart of them to peel off at the speed which they did. Smart to peel off, and Kento, he can get test over by Passport. He has an angle there. Melted can hold down inside of the site behind the Kiba barriers he set up so long ago. Even when they drop, Melted could catch them off guard unless this person on the hatch is doing their job. And I think they are as he goes through the wall and he sees oh! the head! Well played by Melted. 
Not two times in a row for Mirage, as it was Fultz to win that battle before. Now it's Rampy's turn on the same engagement. Oh, <laughs> Deagle out for Melted. A third could be found, and he gets them both! Goodness gracious! Melted, what a performance on that round. Mirage regained the lead. I like that. I, I'm so happy we're spectating Melted, but we, because we saw the realization right as he realized, wait, this wall is soft. I can impact this wall. If He's got to be planting right there. And what do you know? And because of that Kiba barrier as well, while the impact grenade destroys it, he has the cover to go for that play. The impact grenade destroys it, but he has sightline on the planter. It can take him down. And that hatch, which can do such a good job in making sure that nobody pushes the planter, because of the ability you have with the zombie, because of that combination of the Kiba and the impacts, that play was possible and Melted managed to get it successfully. But even then, you still had Kento able to play offsite and provide another angle, denying essentially an entry point that SSG could have gone for a different execute. They were shoehorned a little bit because of where Kento was playing. On top of that, Benji wasted so much time up top. He's done his job as well. My gen all generated all the magnets he could. He just sits behind the Kiba barriers and forces SSG to put them, or to uh, take him down. Mirage have done such a good job at that stall game so far. Honestly, I cannot believe it, but I'm so excited to say it. They might take their first victory here if they just keep this slow game going. Mirage have now actually exceeded the expectations that many of us might have had. We will have all 12 rounds if Space Station prevails. So, I mean, you'll go deep into it, but Mirage beating their previous best, which was the 4-7 that they lost to TSM, if you recall. You and I actually spoke a little bit before this match when we were talking about Mirage looking for their first victory. And we both acknowledge the fact that if there was a team that would lose to Mirage, and Mirage only gets a single win all season, it would be Space Station. <laughs> we did say And that. we both said it. We said if there's any team that is just not going to show up and Mirage ends up winning an ugly match against them, it's and gonna be SSG. But I will say, I mean, that was us disrespecting Mirage because the Mirage that's shown up today is better than I think either you and I and, and most of the desk thought would show up. And, and my logic there wasn't like, oh, SSG are bad. It was just former world champions, constantly on the grind, jack of all trades. They could do so many things. They have a nine map pool. Of course they would lose to Mirage, who have not had a very good stage up until this point. It just seemed like some kind of irony. The universe would pull through. And right now, Nyx was very close to uh, putting SSG on the back foot very early on on top of those east stairs. But he is now peeled off, moved back towards 90. But no, Melted no, 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 gets no, no. aggressive. Melted gets spotted. There was another player on drone. If Melted hops out and gets the kill onto the Finca, there could have been two there for good measure. So smart for SSG to peel off of the intel gathering that they were on. The discovery phase still underway. Fultz is in. Look at this. Do they know? I don't think There's they do. There's almost an enemy behind. There's almost one of them and behind enemy lines. Rambi takes out Nyx. That was the bandit that was playing off of the triple panel wall inside of office. Not the start that you want from Mirage, who are looking for that knockout blow to move towards match point. Nade goes in from Fultz, but it's undercooked. That actually could have been a kill if it had been timed appropriately. More track stingers going in, handled by Melted. This gridlock was integral in terms of her kit. Maybe not necessarily her abilities or the way that Hotton played her in the previous execute onto this bomb site. Melted is making a fortress out of CCTV right now. Two <laughs> Kiba barriers placed on that CCTV doorway. One on the wall as well, just to make sure nobody blows it up. We also have Kento playing inside a fountain. SSG are in danger, well, assuming assuming they don't make good use of these next 40 seconds. They are in danger of going with the exact same execute they did before, just going in through a doorway and struggling. But they've got two kills so far. Make that three, make that four! Never mind, they're not gonna make that mistake. Well, I mean, it's all up to Melted, and he's finished off by Fult. So again, this seesaw, as we talk about, neither of these teams really want to put it away. They are so evenly matched here on border. And indeed, it was Fortin with Melted, as we saw, <laughs> establishing a very safe space for him with all of those Kiba barriers. I mean, he was doing a magnificent job immediately. Need a new pair of Kibas. We need a new pair of Kibas. That is absolutely correct. A tactical timeout now brought out by Mirage to answer the Space Station timeout that pays off right away. Again, the only team that has won two rounds in a row was Mirage all the way back in rounds four and five. If this holds, we go to overtime, which actually would uh, benefit Mirage because they have the three rounds, do it overtime, tied 6-6. It'd be SSG to push us to OT. This is where coaching, I think, comes in more than anything. And I also think experience plays a huge role here. Because of the fact that you have so many veterans on the side of Space Station, 
this is a team that, yeah, they need coaching, but they yeah. can also sort it out in the server, I think a lot more effectively than a team like Mirage, who have three very inexperienced players on the squad. At least comparatively, of course. Oh, of course, you know, yes, absolutely. Mar Marmalade has a stage now. Veggie has a few stages. Melted has a stage now. Kento, though, he doesn't have a stage. And of course, you have Nyx, who has a plethora of stages, a bunch of stages, quite a few stages that Nyx has played over the course of his career. But yes, you do have a point. SSG have just been in this situation a lot more. They can figure things out. Whereas Mirage, they might need a kind of outside voice to come in and get the rails back on track. And so with that in mind, I'm not going to talk about Mirage right now because SSG have switched uh, four of their attacking operators to, if I can see correctly, from top to bottom, Glaz, Lion, Skip Rampy, because he hasn't switched, but he's on Finca, and then Blitz and Ying, Parker. Blitz and Ying to round that out. You talked about we haven't seen any shields, and he talked about that in conjunction with Mirage, but it's hot and cold right now to go on the Blitz. Where could he be? This is a... Uh, Believe is it or a, not. I love this. I absolutely love this from Space Station because w no matter what happens, this round is going to be absolutely bonkersville. And I think they're going to do main door. I think they're going to go in. I think, I think it's going to be a quick one. And it really comes down to how the defense respond to this. Now, a team like Mirage knows how to do this because they've literally done it to other teams themselves. So you talked about it when they were playing with their coach. And look at that. The disco dance party, the candelas, the smokes, hot and cold getting the diffuser down. We are 30 seconds in, ladies and gentlemen, folks and friends, friends and enemies. And SSG is two kills and a diffuser planted. It's certainly looking like match point for Space Station, but Arm gets something, at least one. A jump out, she looks for another, but SSG is rebuffing Mirage every single step of the way. Melted has to survey the wreckage of this round and figure out what exactly went wrong. And I mean, he sees the blitz and he needs to get the absolute hell out of there. What are you gonna do? Just toying with your food, hot and cold. It's kind of ugly, but I guess it works. <laughs> Guys, finishes it off. <laughs> that's the round for Space Station. That's probably one of the most comedic, comedic just stands there and I've just, ever seen. It's plat. It's just falls boom. over. Just plat. Uh, Remarkable stuff. And you're not going to get away with a lot of those. Let's be completely fair. No, you won't. Mirage have come so far, but Space Station earns their second round in a row. The first time that they've actually done that all game. And because of it, they're on match point. Mirage need to close the gap. Armory did not work out the second time. They won it all the way back in their very first defense in round number seven, lost it in round 10, and that's when Mirage called their timeout. Now we're in round 12, third attempt. Yep. What does it go into? You lose Armory, you lose the match. You win Armory, you go to OT, that's great. You maybe win the match. You maybe win the match. Maybe. It certainly gives you a better chance than losing the match. And one switch up that SSG, all right, well, never mind. I was going to say one switch up that SSG made last time on Armory was the Nook pick, and then right as I started talking, a full switch to Jackal. So there goes all of what I was going to talk about out of the window. But to be fair, Jackal can aid on that full clear. You know, if you're questioning where somebody is, you don't know a certain position, you can look down at the floor, maybe find some feet, and then scan it, and you get some active intel. However, the one thing I will say, Jackal's utility in that regard, unless they're bringing him for the smokes, in which case you can disregard this, but mm -hmm. if they are bringing it for that Inox to aid on the full clear, you probably have a good idea where most of Mirage is playing. You know Melted is going to play in CCTV. He's been there every single time they defended Armory. Benji might be the only one they need to worry about, but even then, he's been down below quite a few times. That's just something Droning could solve. So I, I don't know if I fully buy into the Jackal pick just because Borders is the kind of map where you have to worry about somebody running around, except maybe one person, and you can usually solve that via Droning. Do or die for Mirage, and if they don't end up winning on this match, or in this round in particular, then they will still have given their best result that we've seen from them, but... I mean, you gotta get closer than that. Mirage are, as of, you can see, the top, the team that are in last place in the league, and, well... Want to hang on to their spot, frankly. Foltz takes out Nyx, and now it's Benji in line. Down he goes. The oh, entry no. from the Jackal working out very well. Space Station look to be ending this miracle run from Mirage on border. Another EE1D burned out. Foltz the has taken a tiny bit of damage. What happened to you, Nyx? We trusted you. You were the answer. You were 10 and 4. Now you're 10 and 7. The rest of the team have not been able to pick up the slack, and after those couple crucial yeah, rounds from Little Nightmare Nyx. Mirage have just not been able to find any success in their 1v1s, especially on this defense. There are a lot of times where it's like they've looked a little listless. 
just waiting for the attackers to bring the fight to them. And now, and now, unfortunately for Mirage, you know, you had Benji in a kind of a flex position. He can maybe go up some staircases and help out Melted if he's feeling a lot of pressure. But now in that 5v3, you just have to hope that Melted and his utility can hold on to CCTV. And Kento, wherever he's playing, he can hold on to his position. And if all else fails, Marmalade can hold on to the site. And right now, that means this means Melted is the only player off site right now. With a minute left, SSG could fixate on him, focus on him, and take him down out from CCTV. Rampy's already moved on in, but Melted picks up one. Maybe second, this could save the game. Rampy goes down, it's Ke Kento instead. Oh my goodness, kills back and forth. Kento could have the assist as well, but he's being stopped for now by the wall. Bosco on the hunt over towards Fountain. You see debris flying everywhere. Skies has another idea about this defense. Suddenly the 5v3 becomes a 3v3. Mirage in a good spot. But Melton's been isolated down below. If he crosses in front of Skies, it's an easy pick for Space Station, and there you go. Deftly handled, just like old clockwork. Skies has had those kills before, and they are easy to come by. Now Mirage trails yet again. 25 seconds left. Marm completely out of toxic canister. Still so many magnets for Kento, but where are the projectiles going to go? You need to get into the bombsite space station, utility or not, and start picking up these kills. Mirage on the ground. It's Marmalade with one. She drops immediately, disappearing. It leaves Kento in this position, swatted away by Skies. Marm has been a standout performer for this team. She's clutched before. Can she pull it off again? No! Skies denies her the ability to get back in, and space station survives quite the scare to take it. 7-5 over Mirage. 7-5 over Mirage, yes, but still the most convincing performance we've seen from Mirage. Maybe even, of course, they had that victory over TSC.